All right, we are being live streamed, um, but we've got another four minutes or so before um, it officially begins. Uh, just as a reminder to everybody um, on the panel that when it's not your um, session, so if you're in the council and it's the RSU's turn, make sure you turn your cameras off so that um, you don't kind of clutter up the screen. Um, and leave the line light for our seal and vice versa, of course. Okay. Great. Should we turn our cameras off um, now or will should we keep them on for sort of the introductory part? Um, yeah, whatever. That doesn't matter. Just as soon as we start the, the questions. Okay. So I've never had to change turn the camera off before. Is that just so it's gonna be down, down in your bottom and right next to your mute button? Uh, your lower left hand corner. It's my um, upper next to your right microphone. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay. And All then right. you'll want to um, remain muted as a default and then unmute when it's your turn to speak. That way you don't have to worry about background noise. Or being caught with a hot mic. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, thank you. All right. Trying to see if I see any familiar faces. All right, Dave, I show 6 p.m. All right, we'll start off then. Great. Good evening and welcome to Orno's Canada tonight. My name is David Chase. And uh, together with the technical and moral support of Assistant Town Manager, Del Ryder, I'll be serving as the volunteer moderator for tonight's event. Glad to be here again, my second time around. They gave me a second chance to try to get it right. Um, and uh, together here tonight with the panelists, live on Zoom, and on the town's Facebook page. Tonight, we'll have the opportunity to question uh, two panels of candidates. First, the candidates for seats on the board of directors of regional school unit number 26. And then immediately following, I think we'll have a brief break in between, but immediately after that, uh, we'll have the candidates for town council. Uh, in the first session, you'll hear from two candidates running for two seats on the RSU 26 board of directors. And, so they're running unopposed, and they are Nora, excuse me, Noah Charney, who's running for one, uh, the three-year term, and Kevin Roberge, who's running for one, one-year term. In the second session, uh, you will have a chance to hear from seven candidates, I believe, that are participating tonight, running for three seats open on the Orno Town Council. They are Sonia Berthesel, 
Lynn Karen, Terry Grenier, Leo Kenny, and Brandon Liebethal, who are running for two three-year terms, and Stephen McKay and Robert, Robert Laraway, who are running for one two-year term. As I moderate uh, tonight's session, Zoom participants are encouraged to use the question and answer function to pose a question to candidates, or there's an option to raise your hand to ask a question of the candidates. And here's the format that everyone's been made aware of that we'll be using for each of these sessions. Uh, there, will, there is a timer that'll be used to time the candidates' uh, opening statements as well as their responses to questions. Each candidate will have the opportunity to give a two minute opening statement. Uh, and uh, the order of candidates has been chosen randomly uh, ahead of time. After the opening statements have been completed, I'll open the question and answer segment uh, in which I'll start off with certain questions that have been previously provided to the candidates, at least I think they have. And uh, during that uh, segment, each candidate will be allowed a one minute response. And they'll, there's a timer that uh, I think they'll have be able to observe uh, and so they can get a sense of where they stand and how much time they have left to respond. Uh, and as I mentioned that uh, participants on Zoom can use the question and answer function. Um, and in the interest of time, um, ask to please that you uh, state your question briefly. Um, try to stay away from making uh, long statements, um, easy for me to say, uh, but uh, hard for me to follow through on. Um, and I understand like a, a, many of us, uh, there are those that have strong um, positions on many issues. And, but in, under this format, I'd ask that to limit, the, limit to your um, time to questioning the candidates rather than, uh, this isn't really the, the format to, to make statements about um, particular issues or feelings about issues, but rather for us all to get a sense of the candidates and where they stand on the issues. Um, and as always, and it's been my experience, we've always had it, a uh, civil and respectful session. Almost feel like I shouldn't have to say that because I see no reason why we, it would be otherwise. Um, and again, that we, there's no need to give an indication of expressions of approval or disapproval of the candidates or the positions, but rather ask the question and you'll have the response and you can make obviously your own uh, judgment on how you feel about that. Um, I appreciate everybody that's participating tonight, uh, in particular the candidates. Um, as I've always said, it's a lot easier to ask the questions than it is to answer them. Um, but I, and I also appreciate the, uh, uh, the participants that we have uh, from the community who've joined in and, and taking advantage of their opportunity uh, to learn more about the candidates and their positions. So uh, we're going to begin with the RSU 26 school board candidates. And uh, I think Bill's going to move those to the um, screen so that we can begin. Um, and so, uh, and the order previously chosen, first we'll hear from Noah Charney and then uh, Kevin Roberts. And just a reminder that the opening statement is two minutes. And, um, Then I think, let's see. Oh, I think that's, and I think I'm just going to remind her that, uh, again, thank everybody for participating and uh, good luck to you all. And a reminder that if you do put up signs announcing your candidacy under state law, it requires that you put your name and contact information um, on the sign. So, with that said, thanks again. And we will start off with uh, Noah. And if you would uh, like to start off with your opening statement, that would be great. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm Noah uh, and I've got two boys here you can see running around, Alder and Juno. We're, we're new to town here, um, we just moved here in August. And, uh, um, you know, so so basically from the time Juno was born until about last year, I was the primary caretaker. So for me, despite my gender, I kind of identify as a mom more in this culture. And so all of last year, I homeschooled my kids um, and, uh, 
before that, they're in a school where like Juno was for three years in a forest kindergarten where his, he was out, basically his classroom was in a tent in the woods. Um, and I spent a lot of time sort of in the classroom environment and thought a lot about progressive modes of education that pull from the best of kind of like Waldorf and Montessori and nature-based education. And that's sort of where I come from in terms of, you know, the, one of their, their teachers said it in a way that, that spoke a lot to me. She said that, um, a lot of schools teach students how to do stuff, um, how to like do like like little tasks and things. That's the focus uh, at that school. They teach students how to be, um, how to inhabit their bodies and how to be in a community and sort of how to be comfortable in, in that space. And that to me, that says a lot about kind of like what what I think about and what I think is important. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time teaching undergrad. I teach at, I mean, teach uh, at the university here, conservation biology and and thought about pedagogy a lot. So, you know, I used to teach at a school where they did had no grades, only narrative evaluations. And, and so I'm generally interested in sort of de-emphasizing like competition and awards and narrow ways of evaluating people and students and emphasizing kind of like holistic modes of education, play-based, nature-based, social emotional skills, and um, you know, food that comes from a farm, not a little plastic bag, and like all these sort of things that I think are nice, but I recognize there's a lot of constraints with around money, politics, laws, and I'm new here. We came in the middle of a pandemic, and I really want to just listen and know what what the school is like and what what opportunities there are and, and be part of whatever solutions there are, and, and so just spend some time listening. Thank you, Noah. Uh, Kevin? Thank you. I'm grateful to be here tonight. I'm happy to use some of my time to acknowledge that we're on the homeland of the Penobscot Nation, where issues of water and territorial rights and encroachment upon sacred sites are ongoing. Penobscot homeland is connected to other Wabanaki tribal nations, the Passamaquoddy, the Malasi, and the Mi'kmaq, to kinship alliances and diplomacy. I recognize that the Penobscot Nation and other Wabanaki tribal nations are distinct sovereign legal and political entities with their own powers of self-governance and self-determination. So my name is Kevin Roberge. I use he, him, his pronouns. I live here in Orono uh, with my wife and three children, first grader, second grader, and a junior in high school. I'm an adjunct lecturer at the University of Maine, and I teach both in mathematics and also in women's gender and sexuality studies. I'm also pursuing a second master's uh, in education with a focus on sort of the equity oriented pedagogy that Noah leads, uh, alludes to as well. So I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a teacher. I'm also an officer in the uh, union that represents part-time faculty on campus. So I, I'm a strong believer in strong unions. Um, and I'm really interested in, I mean, similar things to what Noah describes, uh, thinking about equity oriented pedagogy, thinking about ways to, to play non-competitively, but also supporting our teachers. Um, and why we do that too, uh, imposing things on them, working with teachers, staff, uh, administrators, especially during these times, which have been difficult for students um, and all members of the RSU uh, family. So thank you. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. So um, first, well, uh, I think as we indicated, the uh, order would be Noah first. And so Noah, I realize that in some of these questions you might have addressed uh, somewhat in your opening statement, but the first question is, uh, what experience or expertise would you bring to the school district in your role on the school board? Yeah, so I mean, I talked a little bit about expertise and experience teaching um, and thinking about pedagogy in, in different forms. I guess I would also say that, I mean, and being a parent, right, um, I also would say that, you know, I've, I've uh, been the executive director of a nonprofit conservation organization where we bring together sort of like uh, environmentalists and and the business or development community and find common solutions and think about just listening to stakeholders and understanding perspectives and, and trying to find a way through the complicated thorny issues of of you know people dealing with other people and um so i think that's all that's all relevant um so yeah i think i think yeah i think i said enough about you know my experience teaching and stuff so yeah thank you now, Kevin, now I'll repeat the question uh, with regard to the experience and expertise that you would bring to the school district uh, in serving on the school board. Yeah, similarly, um, you know, parenting, uh, a love of children, a love of education, 
um, an interest in always improving what we can do with education, supporting all, our, all of the children, all of the students um, in RSU 26. Um, I'd like to think that I, I, I bring a sort of multiple perspectives, uh, again, as a, a strong proponent of unions and teachers, um, but also a parent with children in the school system, and then also someone who works on campus um, trying to do a better job teaching students, reaching students where they are, recognizing the, the diverse uh, life experiences that students bring and that can complicate their learning. So those sorts of experiences and aspirations, I, I think could benefit the school board. Okay, thank you. And so in an effort so that one doesn't always end up being the second person to answer the question, uh, Kevin, I'll stay with you on the, on the second question. Uh, what do you think? Are the most important priorities or goals for our school district at this time, and what role should the school board take in pursuing those? Sure. Um, I mean, certainly maintaining the the safety of everyone, the RSU twenty six uh, school system, the staff, the faculty, the students. Uh, I think RSU twenty six has been doing a fantastic job of that with vaccine clinics and masking and social distancing. So continuing that, um, and I know there uh, are efforts efforts underway to. Um, to examine the curriculum to continue to kind of kind of improve upon it in terms of representation and inclusion. Uh, those are areas I'd really like to be involved in uh, as well. Um, other than that, I, I will admit I'm somewhat new to the school board. So I look forward to learning more uh, and also hearing from the constituents uh, what issues they'd like to hear about tonight. Thank you. And Noah, again, the, uh, your thoughts on the most important priorities or goals of the school district at this time and your role what would your role should be in pursuit of those goals in yeah i mean i think similar um obviously getting past covid and i'd like to sort of look a little beyond then too um and i think like kevin said i i i want to learn i want to listen um and and i don't want to presume too much before going in because i'm new and i have so there's a lot i don't know um but uh, I think supporting teachers, yeah, making sure they're paid and compensated well and supported in all ways. I think supporting students, and I think uh, yeah, and, you know, there's little things like um, talked a little bit about like having more time for lunch and and things like that. Um, but seeing what's possible given the constraints of schedules and and every everything else that goes into figuring things out. Um, but yeah, I I yeah, I think I think I want to just start by listening a little bit more. Okay. Thank you. And so staying with you, Noah, uh, and I think you both alluded to this a little bit, but uh, given the ongoing challenge of balancing property tax impacts for residents and the, as, against the needs of the school district, how would you approach your, your decision making uh, regarding budgetary issues, Noah? I mean, I would sit down and look at the budget first, which I haven't done yet. Um, so I don't know, again, like <laughs> where we can move things around. Um, I would always sort of move to emphasize things that that benefit sort of all students um, and all members of the school community and, and aren't just for a sort of select few kind of, um, you know, in terms of opportunities, I think, uh, and and while making room for for the diversity of all the students in our classroom. So, um, yeah, I, 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 again, like I need to sit and look at the budget. I would listen and I'd see what, what other people come up with. Um, so I, yeah, I can't say too much more about that right now. And uh, Kevin, to you, just as a reminder, the ongoing challenge of balancing the property tax impacts on residents against the needs of the school district uh, and your approach and with regard to decision making on those budgetary issues. Sure, I, I would like to hear more from constituents. I, I remember the uh, last budget increase, there was uh, quite a bit of chit chat around town. And um, I'm certain people in Orno support their schools and they have uh, concerns about the cost of taxes. On a related issue, I'm, I'm also very interested in exploring um, those taxpayers in Orno that are not citizens and so cannot vote, nominate or run for school board. And I think that is a related issue that there are folks whose taxes, uh, who are taxed without representation. So that is something I'm interested in pursuing as well, which is budget adjacent. Um, but it's, it's, there's quite a few you know, amazing families that I'm friends with around here who can't really be part of this process other than to talk to the school board. 
um, and their, their taxes are affected as well. Thank you. Um, and I have one more uh, question that had previously been provided. So if anybody has one that uh, out in the audience that they'd like to pose, um, please be sure to let us know. Uh, otherwise, we'd be moving to closing statements after that, but certainly happy to entertain um, questions from the audience. So uh, uh, back to you, Kevin. Uh, do you, for you, see any commitments that would conflict with your ability to fully participate in the RSU process if you were elected, knowing that there's probably a number of long, arduous nights ahead at different points during the year? Uh, not that we all don't have conflicts, but um, anything that would prevent you from doing that? Uh, nothing per, uh, nothing predictable. No, I, I definitely made sure to sit down with my family. And um, after talking with Patrick Rowe about the experiences he's had, um, make sure that my family knew that they were in for some uh, Tuesday nights without dad. Um, so there's nothing that I expect to be a conflict. And I'm, I'm ready for some long meetings and some some great community conversations around our school system. Thank you. And to know, you know, and I guess I'd be surprised if someone said, yeah, I got all kinds of conflicts and I can't do this. Uh, but, uh, but I do think it's a, you know, it, it, I think people in the um, community recognize, if they don't, they should, that it's a huge commitment on the part of the uh, people that undertake these roles. And um, so fair to address it, I think. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Uh, I don't think there's anything that can prevent me from doing the job. Certainly, there are things that are gonna <laughs> get, uh, pop up and then have to be like fires that need to be put out. And, and having kids, I mean, it's the reality of participating. It's like you know, sometimes you just have to parent them, and whether they come to the meetings or not, or what happens, you know, that's an that's a reality. We all have jobs and things that have to happen. And and you know, for some of my work, I do. I do anticipate having to travel sometimes and and having to zoom in and I know I can't maybe vote in those meetings but participate occasionally um not the majority of the time by any means but yeah so there are going to be certain things that come up from time to time but um it's not going to be like all the time so thank you uh bell I didn't see any raised hands or questions submitted did you am I missing anything there no, but this time there are no raised hands or asked questions. So uh, with that, uh, given that, then I think we'll uh, proceed to the to the closing statements. And uh, I guess that puts Kevin first to uh, to close, if you will. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess I want to say to anyone who's watching um, and to people that you know, um, my university emails, my first name dot my last name at main.edu. Uh, and if I'm elected in March, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I, I want to hear from parents, from taxpayers, uh, citizens and non-citizens about um, your aspirations, your hopes for the school system. Um, I think we can dream big. Um, that's the place to start. And then to see what's feasible within our budgets, with, our, with, with what faculty can handle, with what parents can support. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out and start a conversation. Um, I think this is the way that we make schools better and better is by working together. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Noah? Yeah, I think we get RSU email accounts, as I understand it, um, but um, <laughs> which I, that's why I'm in it for. Um, but uh, no, I, 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 you know, totally like I want to hear from the community. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to kind of shape education, shape especially for my kids' education and, and for the community and see what we can do in sort of moving the needle forward in, in how education works in the society and and what we want to do with our little community in Orono um, with education. And so being part of that, having the community weigh in, supporting the people that are going to be carrying the weight of, of this, the teachers and other staff, um, I think it's all exciting and I, I'm, I look forward to sort of seeing what we can do and seeing, and I'm recognizing the challenges that I don't yet understand um, and that are gonna maybe you know, be the realities that, that, we'll, that I'll come to understand soon. So um, yeah, thanks again. And yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to, forward to hopefully move in. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you both Kevin and Noah for uh, participating tonight as well as your willingness to put it out there as canon it's to serve and then ultimately uh, hopefully serve on the school board. Uh, we appreciate your time. 
and uh, and offering up some of your thoughts and opinions um, on a topic that's always very important in every community, but even particularly in this community. So again, thank you. Um, thank you, Bell. Uh, we had built in a we had built in a brief break in order for us to change formats. Do um, you want to take a couple of minutes before we start, or you tell me? I think as long as um, everybody for council is ready to turn on their cameras and get started um, and RSU candidates are able to turn off their cameras, um, we're ready to go when you are. Okay, great. So as soon as looks like everybody's clicking on and uh, so we will um, move right to there. I think, uh, yeah, I think we are set. We can move right. Great. Yes, so we're ready for round two. Um, and uh, so there's a, there is a, we're fortunate to have a fairly large uh, candidate pool for council seats. And so this one will probably take a little bit longer just by sheer numbers. Um, but uh, obviously it also uh, would depend on the uh, questions that we get from the public. But, uh, and we hope to finish by eight, but certainly we would have seem to have plenty of time for that. Uh, and, uh, but again, I would encourage people if they have questions and that they'd like to pose to certainly do that. Um, and again, just a reminder, there are three open seats on the council. Uh, there are five candidates who are running for two of those seats. Those two seats are three year terms. And then we have two candidates running to fill uh, what we have as one two year term. Uh, the random order of candidates uh, tonight to speak, and I will attempt to, becomes a little more challenging with seven, but hopefully I can handle it to, to rotate the questioning so that everybody isn't either first or last to answer the same questions. Um, but that uh, random order is we're going to be starting with uh, Brandon Lieberthal, followed by Robert Laraway, then Lynn Karen, Stephen McKay, Terry Grenier, Leo Kenny and Sonia Berthesel. Uh, and again, using the same format, but, uh, two minute opening statements followed by questions with uh, one minute responses. And then finally, a one minute uh, closing statement to wrap up. So uh, we will start off with Brandon, if you'd like to start with the opening statement, please. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you, David, for hosting us tonight. My name is Brandon Lieberthal. I've been a resident of Orono for six years and I work at the University of Maine. I teach mathematics and I conduct research on disease ecology and floating offshore infrastructure. Uh, since moving to Maine, I've been politically active. I've knocked on doors for the election campaigns of our state Senator Jim Dill, for Jared Golden and for Sarah Gideon. And in 2020, I served as a district delegate for candidate Joe Biden at the Democratic National Convention. Um, my greatest passion is getting young people interested in science and technology. And fortunately, my position has given me a lot of opportunities for that. I'm running for town council because I've come to think of Orono as my home. And although I believe the town has overall done a great job getting us through the COVID-19 pandemic over the last couple of years, um, I believe that this ordeal has highlighted some issues and some areas with room for improvement in the town. Um, I've heard a lot of complaints about access to childcare resources, um, access to mental health care, and the skyrocketing cost of housing. Uh, I believe change and progress starts at the local level, and I want to do everything I can to help our town get through this crisis. Um, over the long term, I want to focus on Orono's population and economic growth uh, by focusing on building affordable housing and promoting 21st century jobs with regards to social and economic justice. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Next, uh, Robert. Hi, uh, my name is Rob Laraway. Uh, I've lived in Orono for a little over 10 years now. Um, and it's also my home. It's the longest I've actually lived anywhere. Um, so I really appreciate everything it's been able to give me. I mean, I love swimming in the still water, um, I walk in the forests. I use the trail system all the time. I mean, Orno has really offered a lot for quality of life and um, an opportunity to make a lot of really great relationships with people. Um, I also really want to shout out Kevin 
uh, who is running for the, the school board who um, did that land acknowledgement. You know, I think it's important to keep in mind all the time that we are on the Scott land. Um, so just want to shut that out a little bit. But about me, I, um, I came here as a student originally, although I grew up, grew up in Bangor as a little kid and moved back and forth from here. Um, I tutored at the university for several years, actually worked as a line cook um, at Orna House of Pizza for close to five years. So I know the experiences of you know, wage workers, you know, lower income people. I was actually unhoused for a few years uh, early on when I came to, to Orna House. So I also understand that lens through which a lot of people um, often don't think to look. Um, but I've also served for um, uh, almost seven years as music director for a couple of churches in the area. Um, I even sing in uh, Orono's Chamber Choir Euphony, which is great, under the direction of Fran Vogt. Um, you know, I feel like I've been a part of this community for a long time. Um, and I'm now entering my third year as a professional community organizer, um, working on issues of affordable housing, childcare, healthcare, environmental protection, tribal sovereignty, lots of other stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, doing that kind of work involves a lot of engagement with other members of the community who have all stepped up in really awesome ways to take care of each other. So uh, I think that's enough for now. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Uh, next up, we'll hear from Lynn. Karen, please. Hi, my name is Lynn Karen. Um, I became interested in volunteering for the town council because I, I met Terry Grenier. And at the time there was a dearth of candidates and he unfortunately said, why don't you run? And I listened. And I, mostly I was interested in serving for the town council because I want to give back to the community. This has been my home since, or the surrounding area has been my home since 1978. So I, I love Orono. Orono has such a diversity of different activities. It has the outdoor activities. It has theater, it has university for, um, for, you know, opportunities and education. It has three breweries. <laughs> it's like Orono just has everything. I just feel very lucky that I, I ended up here going to school and that I was able to settle in the area after I graduated. So um, I'm grateful that I found such a great place to live. I want to give back to the community any way I can. I do volunteer in other groups too. I just look forward to helping Orono progress into the future. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Steve McKay. Hi, everybody. I am Steve McKay. I'm a retired psychologist. Uh, my wife, Kathy, and I have lived in Orono for 15 years now, since 2007. I'm running for council because I care about the town. It's my home, and it's a way that I can serve this community. What I love most about Orono is that it is a community. There's a sense of place where people look out for each other and for the town as a whole. I should say that in my experience, Orono's basic town services run pretty well, I think. Police, fire, public works, the town office. And I also recognize that an important part of the council's work is regulatory stuff, licenses and code enforcement and similar things. I did have considerable experience with such duties uh, doing six years in the uh, Main, psycho main psychology licensing board, which is all regulatory stuff. On the council, one thing I would really like to work on is strengthening the sense of community for all of us. Uh, a part of that I think is working to make Orono, especially downtown, more inviting, more of a destination where people can find things they need and enjoy and where they really just want to be. I know there'll always be things that take people to Bangor for big retail and for hospitals and so on. But you know, there also have been some changes in Orono, I think, that weren't, weren't all for the better, like the closing of the LNA market years back and then Parks Hardware and recently Sweats Garage and the University Inn um, that make Orono a little less able to provide the goods and services people need. We've become a little less self-sufficient and a little more like a suburb. Um, our restaurants and breweries and the farmer's market and the arts and festivals in town really do make Orono a destination. I would hope we could do more in that direction even with newer expanded businesses, especially downtown, ideally including uh, a bookstore, an inn or b and uh, more venues for music and the arts. Ideally with UMaine student engagement in both elections and in business startups, it's an important part of their education. 
And it's important to be attuned to diversity and equity issues that involve all residents in these things. Uh, further connection to the national na natural environment, maybe in, uh, finding more recreational activities on the rivers would be great. And raising the profile of Orono's history, including the Penobscot Nation and the town's role as a lumber uh, mill center in the 1800s would be great. So those are a few things I could see working on particularly. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next, Terry Grenier. Well, first, thank you, David, for hosting us. Um, um, I'm Terry Grenier, a US Army veteran, and I reside on Middle Street with my husband and two dogs. Um, I'm currently a town councilor, and I'm asking for support for another term to continue my hard work for Orono. I'm currently the council chair for the Community Development Committee and council representative to the Black Bear Orono Express Committee. I'm also on the Orono Main Street Advisory Committee and the town council's representative to the Bangor Area Development Corporation Board. In addition to the work I do on behalf of Orono, I serve on the board of directors uh, for the Northern New England American Red Cross, which includes Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, where I also chair the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. I am also a member of the Home Health and Hospice Alliance of Maine Executive Committee. Even with all that, I'm a business owner of a successful mail order pharmacy located in Northern Maine called Eye Care Pharmacy that has serviced Maine for the last 15 years. I am glad that I had the opportunity to give back and service to my community. I've always felt it important to come to town council with an open mind and not with an agenda. It is also important to me to be responsive to the needs of the community by doing the homework when making my decisions. This is not a meet once a week job. It requires a lot of work as I am used to. My extensive experience with businesses and other boards and committees affords me the ability to balance budgets and be an important part of the effective policy process. And once again, I just wanna ask for your support to help with continuing the hard work the council is already doing. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Leo Kenny. Am I, I do the unmute on my own, is that right? Yes, you do, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Um, Again, my name is, is Leo Kenny. I'm running for one of the uh, two, three-year terms for town council. Uh, I'm an Orono native. I grew up in Orono, the youngest of 10 siblings and have lived here all but about 10 years of my life. So from 92 to 2002, I spent some time living in Southern Maine, Atlanta, Georgia, and Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, I've been a small business owner uh, for the past 24 years. So uh, we were fortunate when we moved back to Orono, we actually brought our own employment. Uh, we have a small office here in Orno with a handful of employees. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I uh, moved our family and business back to Orno about 18 years ago. Uh, we have three kids, all have attended the Orno schools. I now have a one college grad, one college freshman, and a OHS sophomore. Um, I've spent seven years uh, on the Orno school board, and, and I, you know, I think having that board experience is particularly valuable. Um, just from the perspective of understanding how a board functions. Uh, I'm running uh, because I've always been engaged in the community ever since moving back. And, you know, I think I bring, I do bring that unique perspective as a native, a parent and business owner uh, in town <clears throat> that would make me a valuable member and contributor to the council. Um, as far as priorities, I definitely have interests around affordable housing here in Orono. Um, also, our recreation program, uh, though I, I think I've broadened that a little to include overall kind of health and wellness. I think we've shrunk over the past decade or so in this area, uh, and uh, really there's uh, nothing more uh, important, I think, than, than personal health. Um, I'd love to see the town being able to offer, you know, its citizens a little more in this area. And, you know, we, we actually have done a little more with rec recently and with some after school care, I think, which was a, a great, uh, a great, great to see because it's been a while, but um, I think that that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, finally, Sonia Bertasso. All right. Um, I am so delighted to be following on the heels of a really wonderful array of candidates. And I just wanna celebrate everyone who's running for office today because um, I think it's a really healthy thing in a democracy to have a great slate of folks who are willing to serve. Um, I've lived in Orono for over a decade now and um, feel deeply integrated into this community in a number of ways. 
I moved here for a graduate school in sustainable agriculture and fast forwarding through um, a master's and PhD and some time working at the university, um, I became director of the Wilson Center about a year and a half ago. So for those who don't know, that's the A-frame on College Ave with the rainbow fence. Um, and that's a half-time nonprofit directorship. And so I also have a couple of other jobs. I'm one of those overachieving millennials who juggles several things. Um, I still do some agricultural science and I also serve uh, as a youth group leader at the Church of Universal Fellowship on Main Street. Um, I'm still here in Orono despite graduating twice because I do really love this community. And um, you know, to echo what Steve said earlier, community is really central to why I'm running for town government. Um, now, I know that the work of a town councilor involves plenty of details and business and getting things done. And I'm absolutely here for that. Um, I'm good with numbers. I have uh, a passion for long-term long -term strategic thinking. Um, I, love reading comprehensive plans. I'm a colossal nerd in that way. And I'm, I'm the kind of person who's high energy, generally good at keeping balls rolling and getting things done. But I don't think that um, the efficacy of our government is, is the number one thing that makes Orono great. I really think it's our community and the, the extra stuff. So it uh, looks like I'm out of time, but I want to be here for community. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sonia. And so uh, we'll start off our questions and we'll move to, to Rob and uh, uh, for the first question. And I realize that some of what you would say, said, respond to it, it was included in maybe in many of your opening statements. But um, uh, again, with the one minute responses to somewhat limited, I understand. But um, well, Rob, what uh, particularly motivated you to run for council and what personal, professional and or educational experiences would you bring that you believe would benefit uh, the residents as you serve on the council? Well, um, you know, I think what motivated me to run was um, paying attention to council for the last couple of years, watching how it operates, um, really understanding sort of what people feel is important there. And also, I'm connected to so many different communities here, as I was alluding to earlier, um, that I, I think, you know, I, I want to be able to represent them well, and I think I, I can do some good um, getting more people engaged in the process. Um, you know, I think I'm in a unique position as a political organizer with the skills and experiences to um, get more citizens engaged and find opportunities for their input as well as bring together different you know, community initiatives, calling on them so that you know, the council makes decisions um, on a lot of stuff, but it can't do it alone. You know, we really rely on the community organizing and, and doing things that it, you know, it cares about, including like fun things like Arts of Palooza or canoe racing, but also uh, environmental work. And that's my time. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Lynn, your motivation and your uh, experiences, uh, you could share those with us. I'd be glad to. Yeah, my motivation was the dearth of candidates that were that were available. When I uh, took my papers out that Monday, I went to the town office and then found out that five other people had also taken out papers. So we ended up with actually a plethora of really good candidates. I'm just really happy to be here. Um, my experiences have been, I, you know, I've worked at the university in different um, science labs as in research labs. I, um, I taught for 15 years at a middle school. I taught science and then I worked for the DEP. So I'm pretty um, well versed in being able to understand rainwater, um, the catchments and, you know, and trying to um, harden up shorelines like Sometimes when I see like Brownies Beach, you know, there's some erosion going on there. And I think there's gotta be a better solution for that. And there's a few areas in town that I think are like that. And I think my experience will help in some areas like that. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Steve, you're up next on experience and motivation. 
Thanks, Dave. Um, in terms of experience, uh, I feel, well, let me start with motivation, I guess. I, I do feel like it's an opportunity, a time to be able to give some things back to the community. I, I really do care a lot about Orono. I think it's a wonderful town. And, and yet I think there's some things that we probably could tweak and make even better than it is. Um, and I feel like I have the time at this point being retired. <laughs> and um, I think some of the things that are re involved in the job are things that are I'm pretty comfortable with. I mean, in terms of doing committee work, uh, I've done a bunch of both in licensing and then in uh, nonprofits in the past. Um, and in terms of uh, the kind of study that's required on issues and position problems that come up for the town, I realize that an awful lot of the job is to get oneself well versed in issues that you may not have known very much about and be able to make a well informed decision on things. And I'm entirely comfortable with that. I think that's that kind of research um, and, and persistence and effort is a part of the job that I feel well qualified for. Um, what else can I tell you? <laughs> I don't know. I do feel like I, I, I feel like I can certainly handle the responsibilities of it and look forward to the chance to do that. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Terry, uh, your experience, which you've alluded to, but also the motivation and the hear from you on that. Yeah, you know, I've, I've always been in service. Um, I actually, back in the Rotary days, they're kind of that, they're, they're, their statements always service above self. And so um, I, you know, this being my second go around with council, I did it originally, um, just somebody had asked me about it because I, I, I kind of have, I've done this before in, in another, like Fort Fairfield as a town councilor there. So I've, I completely understand how uh, local government works and such. I, what I bring to this is that I have, you know, I've had many successful years with my, some of my businesses um, and, and a lot of it revolves around budgets and processes and, and different things. Uh, and, and I've been on so many boards and committees um, that I, I probably weigh too much that I, sh that I should, but um, the, all those things that I do and have done really contribute to my ability to kind of navigate the local government world. And, and, and I truly enjoyed being part of the, the uh, town council. Um, and I, I ask that most people should think about service for their community first. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Leo. <clears throat> yeah, so I, you know, my motivation, honestly, is, is comes from caring deeply about my hometown. Um, I've, um, as I, as I mentioned, had, have spent since, since moving back, really, we've been involved with volunteer committees and, and again, probably the, again, the biggest P the biggest volunteer position, which I, I think technically school board is volunteer because <clears throat> we did away with pay at some point along the way there. <laughs> so, uh, that ser serving the community is, is the key for me. Um, and I, I do think, as I mentioned, my 24 years of being a business owner um, and, uh, and my school board experience is uh, what I bring to the table. Thank you, Leo. Sonia. Sure thing. Yeah, so um, Rob had gave a shout out to Arts of Palooza, which is another of my favorite things about Orono. And, um, you know, I'm running for town council because I want this to be a place where beautiful community ideas like that can bubble up and thrive and be supported by our town government. I think that's such a great part of what makes Orono an amazing place to live. And I'm a highly experienced community organizer um, who also has a background in, in policy as a scientist. Um, I did the kind of work that was tied in with and helps to inform um, you know, legislative priorities. So uh, I come from this with both kind of a wonky environmental science background and real skill as someone who loves to reach out and get buy-in from diverse groups of people. And my work at the Wilson Center um, certainly informs that. And I think I'm uh, relatable to young people and I work with students all the time. So I'd love to be a voice for them in government as well. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. And Brandon, your response. Um, what motivated me to run for council was, like I said, I've really come to think of Orono as my home. And then 2020 rolled around and everything got shut down. 
And it made me realize how important this community was to me. And I really wanna do everything I can to help it get back on track. Uh, in terms of my assets, I'm a numbers guy. Um, nothing makes me more comfortable than a giant grid full of numbers, which I believe would be a valuable asset for managing budgets and managing the concerns of large groups of people. Um, I also think as a teacher, I, I have a talent for developing connections with large groups of people. Um, I, I connect greatly with the young people of this town. And I think that just in terms of balancing the interests of large groups of people, diverse people, I would be very proficient at that. Thank you, Gwen. Uh, so next week, the next question we'll start with, I think Lynn's up first, and I'm gonna jump away from the, uh, the uh, questions that have been um, pre-provided. And uh, we had two questions from the, um, from the audience that I'll do my best because I think they're related and try to combine them into one. Um, so last year's budget for the town increased expenses by 1.6 million or 17%. Uh, I, these aren't my numbers, but I don't have any reason to doubt them, but um, we do know that they went up. So 1.6 million or 17%, which uh, indicates uh, this question, the largest increase for a town or schools anybody's seen for a long time. If you were on the council, if you were on the council, did you or would you support this large increase and why? And if you weren't, what did you think about an increase that large and what would be your criteria for balancing needs and taxes? The second part of that I think is related is, is that do you feel that the town budget should be submitted to voters the way the school budget is? So let me say that again, because there's a lot to that. Um, but, but it is, talks about there being a significant increase in expenses. Um, and do you support that large increase? And um, if not, uh, uh, and what would be your criteria um, in that regard? And should that be put out to the public or not? So big piece there, Lynn, but uh, appreciate your thoughts on it. I'll do my best. Um, this was, this actually was a problem that directed me, that impacted me directly. Um, my taxes almost doubled. So, um, you know, ouch, first of all. But that being said, I still would, I, I understand the increase was because of problems that were at the school that hadn't been addressed in the past. And those, those were necessary expenditures that had to be made to keep our, to keep our school you know, in, in top shape. So I understood those expenditures. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt me, but, um, but I still would support it because a, a school is a lifeblood of the town. I mean, I just, I, I do support the increase. Um, I don't wanna see another one, but <laughs> um, the other thing is, I am very reluctant to put something like the town budget to voters. I'm not gonna say I'm totally opposed, but I would think about that very carefully. Okay. Lynn, thank you for addressing both of those. I know it's, uh, uh, appreciate that. Um, Steve, your thoughts on, I think, yes, you're up next on the, uh, the large increase that we had, your priorities, and is that a remain a matter, matter for council or out to the public? Well, in terms of the increase, um, I'm well aware that our tax uh, rates have gone up quite a bit. That was the case for me and for all of my neighbors here too. Um, and that it is painful. It's a hard thing. Um, truthfully, I don't know all the details of that increase. I, I appreciate what was just said about the fact that it was relating to school needs. And perhaps they've been longstanding needs, neglected things that really had to be addressed. And, you know, I, it's not, there's not a clear yes or no, right or wrong on those things. Sometimes there are emergent needs that simply have to be dealt with. And this may well have been one of those occasions. 
truthfully, I you know have not followed it closely enough to say much more than that. Um, in terms of putting the town budget to a vote uh, to plebiscite, I'm I'm pretty doubtful about that too. I, I know of other communities and states that have done that at times uh, with with budgets, and it's been kind of a mess. Uh, I think the idea that um, we uh, if we elect a council and the council passes a budget, then that that kind of representative democracy makes sense for that. Then they can be really versed, immersed even in the details of why there needs to be a certain a certain kind of budget uh, request. Um, and I think that makes the most sense to do it that way. But I also think then it would be great to have loads of community input, have people contacting their council members um, and for the council and town to be putting out uh, information for everyone to consume about why there are the needs that there are. Um, so I think we could certainly do that. Thank you, Steve. Terry, I guess the part of the question applies to you as you were on there. So uh, when that increase happened and and so your thoughts on that and as well as uh, should it be a public or remain a town council? Well, I, I want to address the second one first um, because we actually involve the community in the budget process. I, the first one I did, I remember a couple of citizens who moderated a couple of years ago at, 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 a, at a council thing, and they were at every single meeting for the budget. The citizens have their abilities to, to be present, to actually perform or be part of that process. And typically we don't see a lot of people show up to that. So I ask that they do that. I think by allowing the town to vote on something like that, I, I'm not in favor of that. Now onto the, uh, the, the budget. What, what people are forgetting is, is that that is a very large skewed number. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly the, the accurate uh, percentage, but the reasoning that that happened was, is back when COVID first started, we shut everything down. We went and we cut services, a lot of which, and it saved loads of money. Now coming back out of COVID, you now have to re put that back in place for those services that we, we were normally receiving. So that number is inflated simply because of COVID. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Leo. Yeah, so um, just, I think maybe one point of clarification. I, I think that the 1.6 million is, is just municipal side, <clears throat> that, that it's not a school related thing. So just wanted to kind of clarify that. Um, it, that's, a, that's a big increase. Um, I'm, I wasn't aware of what Terry just shared. Um, and, and I will say this, I've spent a lot of time on school budgets, school funding, and it's anything but straightforward. Um, and I'm certain municipal funding is, is nuanced as well. So um, what you really do need to understand what, what went into this. And um, so there's a lot more to understand, but, but you know, the direct impact on taxpayers is significant. We've heard from you know everyone. Well, not, I think everyone pretty much is taxes went up fairly significantly. So um, I don't. Uh, that that that's a big issue. It's a big concern, and, and we'd want to look into that regarding um, putting it to voters. So so this changed with the schools back when the RSU was formed. I'm I'm not opposed to it, but the only thing I would say uh, to Terry's point. Even with the school, we have a school process where everyone comes and sits in a room and raises their hand. And, and that's the 12, $13 million budget that um, usually gets about five people to show up. So there's a general disengagement um, and, and that, that's an issue. So I don't know that you get a lot out of the vote. More people show up to the vote than the actual process, but uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay, thank you, Liam. Sonia. Yeah. I'm going to first off say I am in favor of putting the town budget out to a vote by the people. Um, that's the kind of thing that I would love to get more citizens involved in because I think it's important how we as a town are spending our collective resources. Um, and uh, yeah, so my understanding is that the 17% budget hike in a year with 2% inflation, I will add, uh, mostly went to uh, a fourth shift for fire and for road repair. And those are laudable priorities. Um, I would want to think a little bit harder about whether I would have voted yes on that last time around. But I will say that um, I think the fact that this recent assessment 
um, you know, this is the first assessment in about my lifetime. So if we assessed things a little bit more often, maybe we wouldn't have such a massive thing happening all in one year that kind of blindsides us. 17% in one year is a lot. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. Brandon. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I completely agree with Terry. 17% uh, sounds like a lot. The discretionary budget jumped from about 4 million uh, last year to about 5 million today. But if you zoom out a few more years, the discretionary budget was over 7 million just a couple years ago. Uh, so right now, even with that increase, it's our town budget is relatively low compared to the last several years. Uh, frankly, I would be disturbed if we didn't uh, raise spending that much coming out of this pandemic. Um, I mean, all spending has to be carefully considered. I'm not, I don't think we should just put money away willy nilly, but I do think that with just the, it made absolute sense for the town council to close things down in 2020. And then in 2021, 2022, make a large investment to help things start up again. I just, that's, that was absolutely the best way to manage this crisis. Uh, in terms of the other question, I yes, I do believe in absolute transparency. I believe people have the right in deciding how their town is run. So yes, I'm fully in favor of letting the townspeople have a vote in how the budget is spent. And Rob, your thoughts? Yeah, so first I, I want to acknowledge uh, the great information that Sonia just shared um, around this, the specifics on that tax hike. Whether I would support it, um, yeah, I would really need to uh, in order to make an informed decision, really be part of that conversation, re really like understand the nitty gritty details going in, um, which is tough. You know, the, these are long meetings where um, a lot of details need to be discussed. So I wouldn't want to say anything prematurely without really knowing all the facts and all the details. Uh, I do believe um, that, you know, taxes are important and I'm not necessarily against the tax hike, um, it, but as long as, you know, it's paying for services and um, things that the town needs. Um, you know, it's it's a, a management and allocation question, really. Um, as far as the submitting the, the budget to voters, I could see myself being in support of that. Um, but I also think that um, it's really important, at the very least, that we provide more opportunities and proactively encourage um, the community to get involved in getting input there, as well as like getting like outside of the council set of things there also needs to be a lot more community engagement on the side of the citizens themselves so it's it's sort of a you know bicausal situation uh, we need to be working at it from both ends to really make sure that everybody has opportunities to engage and also wants to engage thank you thank you rob and so for the next question i'm going to move back to one of the uh, questions for the moment that we had you had previously been provided for that we'll start with steve uh steve the question is uh do you have any specific issues or priorities for the town council if you are elected? Oh, great question. I, of the things that I'd mentioned initially, I'd, I'd probably underline a few. I uh, Personally, I have been concerned that we see some kind of, oh, revitalization, not revitalization of downtown, that's too strong, because there is a lot going on. But to have downtown become more attractive and more of a destination, offering more goods and services and activities that people want to engage in so that folks are drawn to Orono, that it's a place that folks really want to go. That's certainly one concern. I think also I, I would love to see uh, connection of the university more with us. I mean, in terms of uh, students getting involved politically and also uh, in business roles, I think that would be marvelous. I think it's part of education and uh, we'd be really delighted to see it. And our historical base, I think uh, to see more recognition of the town's history in sort of public places. So we have plaques perhaps and even city tours, town tours that especially pick up uh, the role of the Penobscot nation in our history and as well as the very important uh, lumber mill town that it was last or, you know, two centuries ago now. Uh, some of those are some of the kind of things that that I would see as issues to work on. I, again, I do feel, by and large, I feel like town runs reasonably well from my perspective. I realize that's not everyone's perspective, and I, and that's another important piece. I think is to get uh, allow for real diversity and equity, so that folks who may be feeling left out of the political process can feel included. 
Thank you, Steve. Uh, Terry, your, um, whether you have specific issues or priorities you'd like to discuss with us. Yeah, I, I, I'd say there's usually, there's a couple things right now for me that um, from our comp plan that um, it, it, the, the affordability of housing is a huge issue um, and, and it's not an easy one to fix. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to think of different ways of um, taking lot sizes down a little bit smaller so you can actually put an extra place on it. Um, trying to interact with, you know, through the economic development to find people who are interested in kind of increasing the housing uh, market. Um, secondly, I, I, we, we talk about a lot about the walkability of Orono and, and I, this kind of goes to what Steve was saying is like making that a hub and making it like most people should be able to just say I spend most of my time being able to walk into town. Um, and so that's like one of the things that I really want to kind of look at to try to push more forward with. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Leo? And again, it's about the specific issues or priorities that you might have. Yep. Um, one thing I'd say is, is it's never healthy to come to a council or get on a board with, with an agenda. So, you know, I did mention I, <clears throat> areas of priority for sure um, are, would be around affordable housing and, as I mentioned, kind of health and, health and wellness. You know, we've, we've talked a lot in the past from the school perspective, we want affordable housing so we can attract families so we can fill our schools. Um, that That is still the case. Um, you know, I do appreciate that the council has been doing some work as Terry just uh, mentioned on that by, by reducing lot sizes. And I think that's a that's a positive development that, uh, that's that been happening. Uh, so that that's great. But I, you know, I do have some concerns for some of our elder people living in the community. Uh, we just had this reeval. Re we've several times we've talked about taxes that have kind of gotten out of control. And I think when we've got, we don't want to be forcing um, people out of their homes, taxing people out of their homes. And I think we need to be cogniz cognizant of that. Um, when we, that was a pretty big reeval that, that just went on. And um, I think there should be outlets. If, if that is occurring, we should, we should have outlets in place for, <clears throat> for those, those people. Um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Sonia. Sure thing. I think my number one issue is, um, is really just accessibility and transparency of government. I really believe in representative governance. And um, I think that I, as a younger person who works with students and with folks who are diverse in a lot of ways, um, um, could be an access point to more participation in our public processes. And so that's that's my biggest agenda, I would say. But I'm also, uh, you know, relatedly really passionate about issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion and would like to move those forward in town, uh, particularly the recommendations of the DEI committee from, um, from last year. I'd love to see that process continue. Um, I'm, of course, passionate about environmental stewardship and affordable housing. Um, and uh, as a renter, rather than someone who owns, I bring, I think, a different perspective on that to the conversation. Those are the issues that I care most about. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. Brandon? Uh, well, I believe that pandemic recovery and affordable housing are two extremely important issues, which um, other people have covered. Uh, besides that, I think we have this amazing, well-educated, extremely smart population and not nearly enough jobs that take advantage of their talents. Um, my priority would be more local businesses, more startups, um, get, make Orono grow, get people interested in moving here. I think the Entrepreneurial Center off of Godwin Boulevard or Godfrey Boulevard was a great step in this direction, but I think there's so much more we could do. Um, I think anything we could do that would get people to ex become excited to move here and work here and start businesses here would go a long way towards ensuring our long-term growth. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Rob. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm glad to see we're all in agreement about the need for affordable housing to be on the top of the list. Um, but I also think uh, people, seem to have been wrestling for a while with the issue of student housing, um, you know, in residential neighborhoods, managing relationships with students and uh, longer term or no residents. Um, and I think, I think there's been a lot of question around that, um, given the increase in population at the university um, with seemingly nowhere else to, to put people. So I think really grappling with that. And I wouldn't propose to have any 
answers to that. I just know that that's got to be pretty high on the list of a lot of people that I talk to in town. And um, I think more opportunities for community feedback on decisions being made by the council, I think is really important, more opportunities and avenues for voices and input from Orono residents. Um, so accessibility, transparency, as Sonia was saying, and diversity and equity and inclusion. Um, there was a, a task force put together last year uh, that came up with a lot of recommendations that I don't think the town has really taken seriously yet. We've got a lot of people whose voices uh, and experience were um, solicited, and I think it needs another look. Um, so those are the things that drive me right now. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And then uh, finally on this question, Lynn. Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess one of my priorities is the livability of, of Orono itself. And that includes many things, including climate, making, making sure that we have access to places like Brownies Beach or all along the riverfront, which is a great, it's just a great asset for the town of Orono. Um, being able to walk to school and, and things like that. Um, there's some of the improvements that the town has made have been really good and some have been, the, there's still problems in those areas. So there's that and exploring the, um, the ability of the, of the university to partner with the town of Orono, much the same way that Kobe College has started partnering, partnering with Waterville and um, made um, some pretty big investments in the downtown area in Waterville. Perhaps we could coax them to do some similar projects in the, uh, in the downtown of Orono. Uh, thank you, Lynn. So for the next question, I'm going to move uh, to one that we received from the audience. Um, before that, I'll just, uh, just do a little reminder that uh, uh, I know it's a short minute um, and uh, uh, just to be cognizant of that, um, my, my kids are grown now, so it's been a long time since I've been able to say, don't make me stop this car. Uh, but, uh, you know, I could recall that. But just a reminder, everybody, I think everybody's doing a pretty good job, and it is, it is really hard to try to squeeze an answer in a minute to some of these questions. So, uh, but appreciate you staying on that. So this question will start with, uh, I believe that it's Terry's turn to uh, take up the gauntlet first. The question is, last year the town worked through a DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion process. As a member of the town council, how would you continue or engage the results of that process? Yeah, uh, so we did have an ad hoc committee that came and uh, presented some, some uh, items to work on. Um, first up front, I want to offer up to the community that um, there may have been assumptions that nothing's actually happened, but if, like with most things, if you actually go to our Town of Orono website, you will see a DEI section in there that actually addresses everything that is going or is in the process of being done. Actually, in the last council meeting, we kind of reviewed uh, a, a draft of what what would happen within our uh, within our town staff. And now, and, and also understand that we, we definitely want to move this forward, but we have a small staff, as you've always heard, that is probably doing three times the work of most towns simply because we just don't have the money for that. They have to put that in their schedule to um, work on those projects to get those started. And it's not gonna be a one bullet, everybody, I know everybody wants to get there now, but we're gonna have to take incremental steps and work at this, work through this process to get it done. But if you want, go to the town website and you'll start, you go into the DEI section. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Terry. I think Terry's, oh, I'm sorry, I was started. I, I think it's me uh, next. So it's actually uh, Leo next, sorry, if my order's right. Yeah. Then, so, um, sorry. Yeah, so I, uh, I talk, so read I with interest go, the, the um, report from the ad hoc DEI committee, and I thought the 10 recommendations that were put forward by what I'm, I must say is a really impressive panel of experts were excellent, and in particular, um, recommendation one, to have an ongoing committee, is something that uh, most of the folks in town who I know and have spoken to think is a wonderful idea. So I'd really, really love to see that move forward. That's a priority for me. And, um, you know, I'm committed to throwing the full force of my enthusiasm at it if I am elected. I'm also really happy to hear that the town council considered this at their recent meeting. I wasn't able to attend that. So I'm glad that's 
uh, moving forward in, in those channels. And I look forward to hopefully joining and being part of the process going forward. Um, I think I'll, I'll end early. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, son. It's, uh, I screwed up and uh, things got out of order there. So I'm gonna jump to Leo. It's my fault, Leo, you're uh, next. <laughs> and hopefully I'll get back in the right order. All right. Um, yeah, I, I listened to that presentation uh, from the ad hoc committee <clears throat> that the council had engaged in. I think it was back in October. Or so, you know, I think that committee really did a great job. And I think part of what they were doing was establishing sort of a baseline, an overall assessment of how Orno ranks based on a survey that they had conducted. I, you know, I think there were somewhere around 160 people that identified as being from Orno or Orno residents in that survey. Um, I thought the council's response was very supportive of the work. Um, one thing I did also hear from the council uh, was that um, this is work uh, for Orono that, that's been going on at a municipal government level for literally a decade. I think since perhaps since Sophie was here, but probably even our prior town manager um, and you know knowing knowing the prior town manager and prior councils, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this work has been going on. So. Uh, it's certainly um, <clears throat> important work. Uh, I'm confident that the town will continue with, with what they've been working on and uh, would support those efforts. Thank you, Leo. Brandon. <laughs> so diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, we also include justice now, which makes a full abbreviation JEDI, which I love. Um, I think <laughs> I was very pleased when this when this committee formed and when they released their first report. I think the next step is to start delivering some concrete results, which is definitely easier said than done. I think the one concern that would be the most straightforward to start delivering on is the one that people don't feel like they have a place to air their grievances when they are wronged by any municipal service in this town. And I think that setting up some sort of line of communication so that if, if people do have a problem with the service here, if, with the municipality, that they have, a, they have a place that they can talk to the town and air their grievances and have them taken seriously. I think that's the, the one most important thing we could be doing right now to actually address the issues in that report. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Rob, your thoughts on the DEI process? Yes, so I'm happy to hear that the town is moving on um, DEI stuff, and I, I was also unable to make the, the most recent meeting. Um, and I appreciate the work that the town has done so far on this, although I, I would like to see it continue and, and thrive. Um, I think um, it would be good for us to be examining, first off, yeah, more channels um, by which people can voice grievances and concerns. Um, but I also think, yeah, the first recommendation of the the uh, committee that was put together last year was to establish an ongoing committee so they can really dig into this work a little bit more closely with a little bit more detail with uh, more thoroughness. And so we can really work as a town to make sure that the voices of people from the Islamic Center, from the university, from um, you know, every community, uh, immigrant uh, residents of Orono who right now uh, do not get to be represented in the, in the same way when, depending on their immigration status, um, they are still taxpayers. You know, there are a lot of people in this town whose voices matter. And um, I hope to see the town only get better at um, appreciating and listening and doing, you know, something about the concerns that are raised. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and then uh, let's see, Lynn, uh, your thoughts on the DEI. I just had a chance to, to skim over it. It is a lengthy report. I was very impressed. And the recommendations that, that it made was, were very thorough. Um, I think it's a great first step in, in improving DEI in the city of Orono. Um, I think having a permanent council would be a great next step. And I'm sure it, it was just, I just thought it, I just thought the recommendations were something that can be implemented. The training opportunities, I, I think we'll be able to benefit from those very much in the future. Thank you, Lynn. And uh, finally, Steve, um, thoughts on DEI? 
Well, I was very impressed with the report and the uh, database that they had been able to pull together with their volunteers. Um, it strikes me that the big, the most important thing I think here is to keep the DEI issues foreground and not let them recede into background. Um, I mean, the report itself, the recommendations are, are really uh, <laughs> many and varied. Uh, and obviously you can't take all those things on at once, but what can be done and I think should be done is to follow the recommendations, recommendation to have a standing community, uh, standing committee of community members um, and to have annual DEI training uh, for all city officials and city employees. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense just to keep it foreground. Then I think the, the particular recommendations that need to be pursued that make most sense to follow up on, I think will emerge over time. Uh, but I think it's a great start. I was really impressed with the work that was done there. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the next question, I'm gonna take uh, jump back to the questions that we had range. I'm gonna um, alter it slightly. Uh, Leo, I think we believe sat with you this time. Um, and so in your view, uh, what are the uh, municipal services provided that are that you see as being provided at a high quality service level, and then perhaps match that up again with where you think those services that need some work, if that should be the case? Um, you know, I, I honestly think overall the 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 general services that we we expect uh, from a community. <clears throat> Police, fire, um, and municipal um, are all, I want to say, adequate. I mean, they're all, I think, very top notch. I, I, I have to say, there is a clear line of demarcation when it comes to snow removal. Um, I think anytime you drive out of town, it uh, becomes very apparent when. Uh, when you're on, as soon as you're out of Orono, because uh, we, we do a phenomenal job and uh, we're gonna get to continue to witness that apparently on uh, again this week. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think we um, overall, there's no, and you know, maybe that has something to do with our, our budget increase, but uh, I, I think Orono does a, a good job delivering pretty much uh, all of their services. I don't know if there's another part to the question, Dave. Nope, I think you, I think you covered it. Thank you. Um, and uh, Sonia, the good and the bad there are. Great. That's a little, that's yeah, a little. so I think the town um, does a great job providing uh, services that make this a fairly walkable community, especially if, if you're close to downtown. Um, and I think snow plowing is, is certainly part of that in the winter. I'm usually grateful and happy by uh, about how walkable the area around campus is. Um, and I do think it's a priority to be uh, supporting the services that make Orono an amazing place to live, including trail networks, um, walkability, bikeability, there's certainly room for improvement and in particular uh, connectivity of trail systems, um, I think would be an amazing asset uh, to the community that would start to, um, that would help us draw more people to downtown and really make Orono even more of a, a hub, an amazing place to be. Um, and I am out of time, a minute goes so quick. <laughs> Thank you for uh, trying to stay within that. So Brandon, your thoughts on the highs and areas of perhaps for improvement? I think our roads are amazing. I've never lived in a place that had, that was so good with uh, road quality and snow removal. Um, before here, I lived in Illinois, which gets much less snow than Maine does, but they were so bad at handling it that every winter was like a disaster. And it's just not like that here at all. And the town has been so responsive. Uh, a couple months ago, uh, a tree fell on my yard and I called the town. They dealt with it right away. No questions asked. I thought that was incredible. Um, so by and large, I've been extremely pleased with how the services in this town are run. I think the one thing that could be most improved would be public transportation. Um, I don't think we have nearly enough of an accessible bus schedule. Um, I think if we did have a bus running between the housing and Main Street, for example, we could do a lot to make parking uh, more available in that area. Um, I think it would also be good for local businesses. And yeah, that's just, I think we need more public. Thank you. Um, 
presentation. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Rob. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've been using the trail systems for my entire decade and in almost another year uh, living here. Um, you know, I really appreciate having those as an option. Um, I also think the parks are incredible. Snow removal uh, on my street was speedy and great. And, um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of communication from the town about making sure that people aren't um, parking in the way. So I think there's been a lot of great coordination there. I also um, think the school system's actually done a great job. I've done a few programs with um, the Orono school system, including philosophy across the ages. When I was involved at the university, we did a lot of work with the students and the teachers there are incredible. All the things the students were telling me that they get to do in school, all the different clubs and activities are incredible. Um, and I, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm just really impressed. Also, <laughs> like Brandon, with the quality of the roads, um, it's, it's really great as somebody who bikes a lot. It's amazing. Um, and I would love to see even more bike accessibility and I'm not sure how much time I have left. looks like I'm out. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, you're up next. I'm afraid a lot of this is going to be repeat. Um, definitely the roads, the sidewalks, the snow removal from the sidewalks is, is, is very good. I really appreciate it when I'm walking, um, trash pickup. Those guys are those guys are great. Um, brush pickup. There's many towns that don't have brush pickup, and we we enjoy that, and it keeps you know it keeps us from having to take that brush to the dump ourselves, especially if you don't have a pickup truck. Um, drinking water quality. Uh, when I first came here to Orono, the drinking water quality wasn't, you know, definitely not as good as Bangor, uh, which has incredible water quality, but. Um, but boy, I don't think I could tell the difference anymore. I mean, it's just improved so much. And uh, the trail system, the trail system in the in Orono is wonderful. I take advantage of that very, very often. It's just a great place to live. Thank you, Lynn. Steve, you're up next, I believe. I would echo a lot of what's been said. I do think that the city's the town services are by and large very good or excellent. Uh, police, fire, public works, uh, the town office itself run very well in my experience at least. Um, and I do think maintaining them at a high level is an important function for council to keep an eye on, make sure they have what they need to, to main, remain top notch. I'd also agree with what folks have said about uh, trails and the outdoor possibilities in town. I realize the land trust is sort of a separate entity uh, and they're involved with a lot of that, but they have done great things and the trail systems along the Stillwater and along the Penobscot and uh, you know all of the possibilities for outdoor stuff that the town offers um, and that public, I know Public Works is involved in, in a lot of that. Uh, it's a great thing and uh, makes, it, it makes it a pleasure to, to live in Orono. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and finally, Terry. Well, first I want to point out, Lynn had mentioned about uh, garbage, but um, if you guys didn't go to the town website today, if you have garbage removal or need to go out to the, to the dump, it's not open and that you will not be getting picked up. It'll be on Saturday. So just a reminder. Um, I, I, I know that as Orna, we, we, we really love our services and, and we get great services. Um, and, and the reason why we do is because Orono is so lucky to have the best staff um, of most places that I've even been around. Um, we're, we're fortunate to have an amazing town manager. We're fortunate to have staff, the people who lead all these different departments like Rob Yerksa. I mean, he's amazing. The Chief Lowe, who's now doing, you know, the public safety as a whole for both the fire department and the um, police department. So um i just want everybody to know we're, we're we definitely have the best and it's because of our staff and thank them if you get an opportunity to do that i don't see any room for improvement within them thank you thank you terry uh for our next question i'm going to move to one from our uh from our audience and uh, uh the question is um the town council currently has four committees community development finance and operations environment and comprehensive plan to vet differing departmental and staff ideas, concerns, and issues, and help make choices that move on or forward. Um, an elected councillor must choose two. On what committees do you feel you'd be the greatest asset and why? 
and I realize that's uh, coming without uh, prior knowledge, but I uh, appreciate your your uh, thoughts on that. And again, those uh, four committees are the Community Development, Finance and Operations, Environment, and Comprehensive Plan. And I believe that we start with Sonia. All right. Well, I love thinking on my feet. It's good. I, um, I'm actually really interested in three of these committees. Um, community development, uh, I am interested in, but I guess it, I'm choosing two. So I'm going to do it on the spot. Environments and comprehensive plan. Um, to the environment committee, I would bring the fact that I am an environmental scientist with pretty broad training and interest. Um, certainly I'm trained as, as an agroecologist uh, specifically, but um, I've taught classes including human populations and the global environment, which as it sounds is very broad. And so I approach environmental issues with a, a pretty broad range of expertise. And I'd be so excited to work on this with the town. Um, I also love long-term long -term strategic thinking, and I have a lot of ideas for the comprehensive plan, which I understand will be in the process of developing one within the next few years. So I would look forward to that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Brandon, your thoughts on the committees? If I had to pick just two, I would go with finance and operations, um, because like I said, I think of myself as a numbers guy. Um, I believe that I would be a great asset to the town, uh, managing our budget, determining the best uh, ways to appropriate our funds. Um, my other second choice would be environment. Um, I do have considerable experience in environmental science. I've taught classes on uh, renewable energy and waste removal, uh, which might be a little more theoretical than what would be needed for this town, but I do think that I could still be a good asset to the team. Um, so yeah, I could, I could also, I mean, really, I think all of these committees are great and I'm sure, um, I could also see myself on comprehensive plan, but you just have to pick two. So I'd go with, uh, finance and environment. Thank you, Brandon. Before we go to Rob, I just want you to be able to know if you see me texting, it's, to, uh, texting some questions to, um, to Bell, uh, and not, um, checking my email or anything. So. Uh, so just in case, but uh, uh, Rob, your committee thoughts. Yeah, so um, first of all, community development sounds like it's right up my alley. My professional expertise is in community organizing, really thinking about how to draw people in, get them involved, find opportunities for people to act on the things that they, they care about and that they're motivated to work on, um, which I think is something we absolutely need. And then the comprehensive plan also, you know, I'm I am no stranger to digging into long, complicated policy um, work. I mean, a lot of my work professionally is um, digging into legislation at the state level um, and helping communicate that for other people and working with others on how best to, um, you know, implement that stuff. So I am <laughs> excited about the opportunity to get involved in any one of these committees, but those are the two that really um, strike me as most relevant to my skill set and interest. And for you, Lynn? I'd be um, most interested in being on the environmental committee. Um, my work with the DEP, what did I do? Oh, wait, there we go. My work with the DEP, I think, will <laughs> fit in nicely there. And um, community development, because I think that is an important committee that will have a greater impact on the future of Orono. So I think there's, there's room to do work on that committee that would be interesting and would have an effect. So and environmental and community development, I think together, would, they would complement themselves, each other well. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Steve. I think I would echo what Lynn just said for my own two preferences. I probably feel most comfortable with uh, community community development, just in that that really is the thing that is most intriguing to me. How what how does this town uh, move forward? What 
what does it feel like? What's it look like? What kind of a community do we want to be? That's pretty basic and important stuff in my view. And I'd love to be part of that. And environment too, just because it's been a lifelong concern. I was an environmental biology major for a short time in college, yeah, eons ago. But I've always been interested in uh, ecological issues generally. And uh, both from the kind of local or parochial standpoint of managing our own environment well here, but also since we're a part of the much bigger picture and we want to, you know, make, uh, make a contribution to keeping the earth healthy. Um, those two things would be most interesting, but truthfully, all four committees would be intriguing and challenging, I'm sure. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Terry. Well, uh, Cheryl Robertson will be happy as the chair of the Environment Committee that, that <laughs> there's all this interest in that. So that's great. Um, I am the chair of the Community Development Committee, which captures a lot of things, things that don't fall in finance or the comp plan. So pretty much most of it goes into that committee, which can be fun. It can be engaging. Um, lots to think about, lots to do. So I, I plan to stick with that. Um, the other one that I'm on is the Finance Committee, and I'll, I'd like to stick with that because I do like to, to work with numbers, uh, kind of like Brandon. Um, so it, it just it, it makes it a bit more under a closer understanding of how how the money flows and when what it goes to within our to our town. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you, Terry and uh, Leo. Well, I think I'm going to echo Terry. Um, although I'm not on them, but if I uh, had, had to choose, I would probably, my first choice would be the Finance and Operations Committee. Um, <clears throat> I think I mentioned, spent a good amount of time with school on the finance. Back when we had um, an RSU and 15 board members, we had subcommittees, uh, not so much anymore because there's only five members, but um, I think five. But uh, finance is definitely, definitely uh, an area I'm drawn to. Pretty comfortable with with budgets, uh, spreadsheets, uh, and all that. And I think the other one would be community development. <clears throat> um, not knowing exactly what goes in there, but as Terry kind of alluded to, I think I think there's a lot. So um, that that would be an area of interest for me as well. <clears throat> so uh, what I was texting Val back and forth about was to to we had a person who wanted to uh, pose a question by raising their hand, and so. Um, we're going to try to do that now uh, and have a, a question from the audience. Is that something we can do? Bill? Yep, so I have allowed them to speak. Okay. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Can you actually hear me? I can and we can. Lovely. Um, my question is, I've been attending council meetings regularly for the last two years. And I have often been quite disappointed and saddened by the lack of kindness and professionalism, which I have seen demonstrated by town councilors toward one another, and at times toward the public. If elected, what would you do personally and on a policy level to change the culture of council meetings? Thank you Sarah, for that. Uh, we will start with uh, Brandon. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I like to think I'm a pretty nice, agreeable guy. Um, I definitely always try to put the needs of the team before my own personal needs. Um, I think that just making sure everyone gets a chance to be heard and not just heard, but be listened to is very important. Um, I think that just in terms of policy, like the best thing we could do is just make sure that everyone has time to speak. We have a clear procedure where if anyone wants to respond to another counselor, counselor or uh, uh, interrupt them. Um, but I think that you really can't make a culture with policy. I think it's about the people you elect. Um, if there's particular counselors who you think have been rude or disrespectful, then I would think the best solution would be to vote them out. Thank you, Brandon. Rob. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think one of the most important things as I see it is really building solid relationships with everybody involved, um, both on the council and in the community. And uh, as a, I feel like a sort of broken record here, but really trying to be proactive in setting up more systems for community engagement, um, where the council is really authentically trying to figure out how to listen and take up in actionable ways um, the suggestions of community members. Um, but a group like the council, which does have a lot of responsibility, for keeping the town running smoothly, effectively, 
um, it's, it's going to run into tensions and disagreements, um, and how we handle those is largely up to um, the people who are on the council and their choices for how to engage with one another. Um, the more we can develop some care and build some trust um, with one another, see where each other are coming from, the more likely we'll be able to keep things constructive and forward thinking as we run into tensions and disagreements, which are inevitable. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Lynn. Yeah, I think um, I think the first step is to just act professionally in all ways, all the time. And I think my my um, stint as a middle school teacher will stand me very well um, in trying to navigate all the different personalities that might be on a committee um, in a classroom. You have lots of personalities. And it's to be a team, you just have to put aside your personal feelings and figure out what this person brings to the, to the meeting that you can work with and how you can work with them and how they might be able to work with you. So I, um, I think that just being professional and, you know, I don't have very easily hurt feelings, so. I think that will be, I don't think that'll be a problem for me at all. Thank you, Lynn. Steve? Well, it seems to me that uh, civility and courtesy are really have to be the uh, bywords, the watchwords uh, for folks involved in government. Unfortunately, I know that's not always the case and probably hasn't always been true in Orno, uh, but it's really essential for uh, having a healthy, connected community for people to feel that they, if they speak, they will be listened to and respected. Um, and I think that means for people uh, on the council with each other and, and also for dealing with folks, members of the public. Um, I, even the, the town meetings that I've attended, I just hadn't encountered what the questioner described. So I don't know exactly what their experience was. Um, but I think if that's, if it's the reality, uh, then we certainly need to change that culture, but basically civility and courtesy are other rules. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next is Terry. Yeah. So, um, obviously with this stuff we have in council, there are times when things can get, uh, heated and it's, and it's not typically what you would think as, as a moment of of being mad at somebody, it just can sometimes go that way. If an individual's feeling that you're intentionally cut off, and I, I, I for whomever that the person was that um, asked the question, I, if that person felt like they were being disrespected, um, our town manager has an open door policy. You can go in and 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 tell her um, what 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 you encountered um, and and how it played out for you and 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 you know, have that conversation and we can kind of address it. Um, so that's, that's what I have. Thank you, Terry. Leo? Um, I would say that I am battle tested. Uh, having served on the school consolidation, uh, many were maybe not around for that, but uh, it was a, a topsy-turvy time. <laughs> um, and, and, and then also even, even last year or the last couple of years, managing through COVID on the school board. Um, <clears throat> definitely dealing, um, being respectful uh, is, is, the, is the number one, obviously, rule. Um, uh, I, what was I gonna say? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I guess I guess what I would say is even through those serving on those times, um, I, I would call every I would I still call every person that I served on those boards with a friend. So uh, the key is it's it's not personal. It can't be personal. Um, <clears throat> and and I think you be respectful. You got to listen. Two ears and one mouth, right? We we get listen twice as much as we're talking. So that's it. Thank you, Leo. And Sonia. Great, thanks. 
Yeah, you know, I think I have observed what this question asker is is asking about on the town council. I've I've been present at meetings where I really felt like um, both town councilors and citizens participating were either kind of shut down or scapegoated in a way that um, didn't sit well with me and is not the kind of role modeling that I try to to do in the world working with young people. And I I honestly think that oftentimes as grownups, like the things that we teach our kindergartners, we need to remember those for ourselves too, which I don't say to infantilize in any way, because I know running a town is a complicated business, but I say it honestly as someone who makes mistakes myself, who sometimes says unkind things myself, that we should all do the work every day to try to, to be better. And I think um, thanking people when they come to the town with dissenting viewpoints and um, welcoming uh, diversity of opinion and supporting having a DEI committee would all be great ways that we could um, start to work on this issue as a town. I wish I could say more. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you, Sonia. Uh, next, I'm going to go back to uh, some of the questions that we had before. Uh, this time, we'll start with uh, Rob. Uh, what can be done to make the town more environmentally friendly? Well, um, you know, I think one thing that comes to mind um, is dealing with a recycling situation, which you know I know has a lot of people confused about what exactly we ought to do. Um, I, I think some more serious study needs to be done on this, that is, I'm sure the council's already engaged in. Also, I, I've heard recently um, an idea of municipal composting. I think that's a really cool initiative that we could in, engage in, um, cutting down on the stuff we're throwing away, our waste. Um, and also, you know, perhaps using that compost for any number of community purposes, like a community garden. I mean, there's all sorts of cool stuff we could do. Um, I also do want to shout out um, Cheryl Robertson and the Environmental Committee for the work they've been doing. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I think it's really valuable um, that we have people and decision makers who are, who are working on that stuff. And I might disagree with Cheryl on any number of things, but I appreciate her work um, on that committee. I think that that's been really great. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Thank, Thank you. you, Rob. Uh, Lynn. Yeah, um, uh, first of all, I'd like to work on protecting the water quality in the town of Orono. Um, I noticed, like, like I've said, I've noticed some erosion areas, um, especially at high access areas like Brownies Beach or at, um, at the park on North Main Street. Um, maybe planting some native vegetation, or in some cases, when I was working with the DP, in some cases you have to harden those areas. You know, maybe put in a, an access, you know, a, one of those cement access points or something like that to prevent further further erosion and also to increase access to that area. So that would be great. Um, curtail the the growth of invasives in our area. Uh, Orono is a hot spot for knotweed. And for buckthorn, um, is there a way that we can, you know, we can encourage um, some control for those for those uh, for those species, maybe by planting native species in their stead? Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Steve. Well, one thing that I have really been concerned about is uh, what is happening with recycling, and I realize that because of the, the plant that had been supposedly processing things and is now defunct, uh, that probably a lot of communities are struggling with this, this issue. But I think it's an important one to keep uh, in the foreground to, to wrestle with, to figure out what's, you know, how can we make sure that we're not just creating new uh, dumps, new big landfills um, uh, of materials. Um, that's probably been the single greatest thing. And I hope there will be ways that Council can be helpful in figuring out how to reinstitute uh, a workable, viable uh, recycling program. Thank you, Steve. Terry? Yeah, so I'll kind of echo what Steven said. Um, I, I agree that, that, that we have to continue to keep working on the recycling aspects of things. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of difficult when we, when we don't have an, a good option right now, but um, it's also looking at if we're doing the right things when it comes to recycling. I've often said this before, we, we think we recycle all things that really some of which cannot. Um, for example, uh, our old uh, 
Joe Madigan that I love dearly um, has, he used to always tell me, number one, don't put your wet wipes down the toilet. And number two, you cannot put um, cardboard that has like food product on it because it taints the whole rest of the cardboard. Um, so yeah, environmental, once we get that under control and, and uh, environment, excuse me, uh, the uh, re recycling, once we get that under control and, and figure out an, a good option for that, um, that's where I wanna continue to work. And a little shout out to Cheryl Robertson, who is amazing um, with the environmental committee and all the work she does. Thank you, Terry. Leo. We are moving. Leo. Can you see? Oops. Thank you. Um, I think any way that we can encourage busing, biking, and walking, uh, and I'm going to pick a little bit specifically on Asa Adams, uh, would be one of the most environmentally friendly initiatives we could look at as a community. Um, I, unfortunately, I think COVID has made this even worse. Um, and I think we've almost discouraged kids from, from, from riding the bus, but <clears throat> if you've ever been anywhere near Asa in the afternoon for pickup, it, it almost boggles my mind a little bit. We're, I, I know people live, not everyone lives in town, um, but it is literally um, people parking on Main Street and walking down, parking at the bank and walking down to, to just because the, the line runs all the way back to Main Street. And it, it saddens me a little bit, quite honestly. Uh, so that that's that's an area that you know all we can do is encourage. You don't we're not going to enforce anything there, but um, trying to trying to put that in, in people's in people's mind that you know leverage the buses they're running as it is. So that's my thought. Thank you, Leo. Thanks. Sonia. Hi, uh, yeah, this is a question that I cannot do justice to in one minute. And um, I will say that my approach to this on the town council to kind of echo um, Kevin Roberg's um, statement from earlier would be to dream big and then see what's feasible. So I would love to see us have expanded um, public transit. I would love to be building up uh, parks and connectivity between trail networks that uh, improve bike ability. Like, for example, could we put a, um, a bike and walking trail on that unutilized railroad track on the railroad bridge where there's like two tracks wide? I don't know if it's feasible, but I'm the kind of person who's at least going to dream big and, and ask those questions and be taking, um, you know, our climate future seriously, taking a uh, water quality seriously and trying to listen with intent to learn from a wide variety of people through the process. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna echo what a lot of other us of, of other us has said. I think it's obscene that there are so many towns in this wider area that don't have access to cycling right now. And even if it's not Orono's fault, it is Orono's responsibility because the environment doesn't care about town borders. Uh, we need to do everything we can to increase our capacity to support zero sort recycling. And potentially over the long term, we could expand our capacity to help nearby towns that don't have access to their own facilities. Uh, on the other hand, um, Old Town is developing a plant to use methane emissions for landfills to produce renewable uh, gas energy, which is an amazing feat of technology. Um, it's something I'm really excited about. I'm really excited to see where that goes. And if we could utilize our own landfills that way as a clean energy source, I would absolutely be interested in pursuing that. Thank you, Brandon. And I'm not sure, I wanna make sure I didn't lose my uh, count of who started. Rob, I don't think you I asked you about this yet. Is that right? No, I was the first one, I think. You were the first one. Okay. Go ahead. Happy to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think in, to, to try to stay on time, we've reached that point in the program where uh, everybody has an opportunity to uh, give a one minute closing statement. And so uh, now that I'm, I think I'm back on track, um, then we should start with Lynn, I think. Well, thank you, Dave, for, for moderating. And thanks to everybody that tuned in to the broadcast. Um, I look forward to working with the town to make Orono even better than it is now. Um, I think that my experiences 
in the DP and in teaching and in working at the university would bring some assets to the council. Um, I work well with others, so I'd be happy to work with everybody and anybody that, that will get elected. Um, I just wanna give back to the community. That was my major motivation for running for office. And I look forward to being able to do that if you elect me. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Stephen, Steve. Well, my hope is that uh, on council, I can help Orono develop as a community and as a destination uh, that offers goods and services and activities that people want, including university students in town activities as much as possible uh, and facilitating our connection to the natural environment and to the town's history. I do feel that my own background in regulatory work and the knowledge of the town I've gained over the last 15 years here prepare me well for serving on council. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Terry? Yes, uh, thank you, David, again, for moderating. And thank you to the uh, citizens for joining in and asking some great questions. Um, I, I just want to continue working with the town council. It's been a, 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 a tough job, but a, a job that I've enjoyed. Um, as, as I said before, service above self. Um, we, we work really hard to try to make sure that we make the right decisions for um, the Orono residents, and um, I want you to still trust the fact that I continue to do that. Always available for when you have questions about what is going on, where to find the information. We're here for you, and uh, I look forward to your vote. Thank you, Terry. Leo? Yes, I uh, just wanted to thank everybody uh, that's participated tonight, including the panel here. And of course, Dave, Dave Chase, is, as always, was spot on. So appreciate that, Dave. Um, this is an important process and community engagement is really the only way it works. So hats off to everybody. Um, you know, we've got a great town. Uh, there's just something about being from Orono. And, and I know people that I grew up with way back when still feel it to this day in, in, in the same way that, that we all do. You know, I consider myself very lucky to have been able to move back to Orono and allow my kids to grow up in this town. Um, I think bottom line is that uh, there's always one primary challenge that exists for, for communities and, and that's gonna be striking the balance between pro providing the service levels that the community desires with the finite funds that are available. Um, these sometimes come from the big decisions like new buildings, but it's the smaller decisions I think that can that can have a bigger impact on people's day-to-day -day lives. So again, I'm running, I think I can bring a unique perspective uh, as a native and a parent and business owner that I would draw on when making these decisions. Um, and I wanna encourage, of course, everyone to get out and vote on March 8th and uh, would ask for your vote. Thanks so much. Thank you, Leo. Sonia? Yeah, thanks to everyone who's made tonight possible and to the folks who came and asked questions. And um, it's been really lovely. Um, I would love to serve on the Orono Town Council and be a voice for accessibility and transparency and someone who is approachable to, uh, to students and to members of the community who currently uh, don't necessarily have a, a voice or much say in our, our processes. I bring to the table deep experience as a community organizer and uh, a demonstrated ability to be able to uh, bring people in and, and foster that kind of community that it sounds like all of us are really passionate about creating. Um, and I would also look forward very much to working on issues of environmental stewardship and affordable housing. And I'm not afraid to put in the work and get into the weeds to make that happen on behalf of our town. So. Um, if you like what I have to say, then I would look forward to um, gaining your vote. Thanks, folks. Thank you, Sonia. Brandon? Um, yeah, I wanted to thank you for hosting us tonight and thank everyone who uh, came to watch. And I want to thank everyone who's running for these council positions. Um, I think you're all great. I would be very happy to see any of us serving on the council. Um, I care deeply about this town and I want to do everything I can to serve to make this town as great as it can be. So I would definitely appreciate your vote. And whenever I tell someone I'm running for town council, the first thing they always say is let's go Brandon. 
And they all think they're being so clever that they're the first person to come up with it. Um, but <laughs> if I can at least put a little bit of a positive spin on that, reclaim the good Brandon name, uh, then I think this whole thing will be worth it. Uh, but thank you, everyone. And I hope you all have a good night. Thank you, Brandon. And Steve. No, did I do that right? Sorry, no, Robert. Rob. Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I want to thank David for uh, moderating this thing and uh, all the fellow candidates who are giving such great answers, really impressive people. Um, I do hope to earn your vote come March 8th. Um, you know, I'm somebody who has really taken to this town. This is this is my home more than anywhere else has been. And I think I can do some good. Um, I think I can help make sure that people's voices are heard. I think I can also help take care of the, the details of the, you know, the day-to-day -day operations of the town. You know, I, I think I bring those skills and that care and that, that commitment. Um, you know, I think Terry said earlier that, you know, this isn't just a one night a week job. Um, this is, you know, a commitment um, where you, you really want to understand what you're doing. These are, you know, this is our community and our collective life together that we're trying to organize and do a good job with. So anyway, uh, if you like what I've heard, please vote for me on March 8th. And if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you, Rob. And thank you all. Uh, on a personal note, thank you for the opportunity again to serve as moderator. I enjoy it. Um, I started in Orno in uh, uh, undergrad in the early 80s. And uh, when I graduated in 84, I thought to myself, well, I know one place I don't want to live. Uh, and uh, Maybe that's because if there'd been three breweries, I might have thought differently at the time. But uh, I think it was more due to my immaturity. Uh, but my wife and I moved here, moved back in 1989 and have been here since. Uh, but a great town. And uh, that's due to commitment from people like you who care about it. That's the most important thing. So appreciate that. Uh, and thank you for participating in the, uh, this forum that we've had tonight. And I'd like to thank the town too for putting it together uh, and making this happen. Um, uh, Nancy Ward and and uh, Val Ryder for all their help uh, in putting this together. Uh, there is a great pool of candidates, as I said, and uh, looking forward. Obviously, you see that tonight to serving the community, and uh, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, as alluded to, don't forget to vote though, because that's where it's uh, the most important. Thing is, you got to put the voice out there. Uh, don't complain if you don't go in and mark a spot um, because that's where that's how this thing gets to work. Um, and it is on March 8th. The polls open, uh, are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the Chamber of Council. Absentee ballots are available now. Check out the town website at www.orno.org for more information about how to get your absentee ballot or register to vote. Stop by the uh, town office Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 5.30 to cast an absentee ballot. No appointment needed. However, don't forget to wear your mask. Uh, tonight's meeting will be posted on the town's YouTube channel tomorrow for those who couldn't attend um, or watch the live stream or just would like to see the whole thing over again. Uh, along with the link to the video, uh, voters can also find bios or statements provided by the candidates posted on the town's website. Again, thank you. Um, look forward to a little more snow. Be careful, stay safe, and uh, see you all soon. Good night.